The talk of Sioux Falls 1140 KSOO 1140 KSOO Twins baseball tonight They're going to take on the Houston Astros And they're like kicking everybody's hind end Around all Major League Baseball So we'll see if what the Twins can do Against the Mighty Astros Tonight, 7-10 first pitch on 11-4-0 KSOO. And it's 3-17 here on the Talk of Sioux Falls, 11-4-0 KSOO. And it's time for my PL statement. Uh, first, a couple things I want to mention. Uh, we've got Amy Elliott from Sanford Research coming up in the second hour, as well as our interview with Williard Brewer Jr., who is uh, just won the uh, North American Professional Dart Championship and uh, gets to go to the great... Uh, World Championships in London, so you're going to want to stick around for that. Uh, also, um, the hot mess folks have been from last night from the uh, Wiener Man race, the, the uh, winning team that I was able to spend some time with last night. They posted some photos up to my uh, to our Twitter account, so you can go see the championship team there. I hope that's the last photo they post. <laughs> um, so this win thing, Dan, I... We've had both sides of the vote on, which is Tuesday, down in Lincoln County. I say down in Lincoln County, but we are actually in Lincoln County here, right on 57th Street in Sioux Falls. And they're going to decide on Tuesday how far wind turbines need to be from residences, essentially. That's the question. And it's a, it's a fine question. I'm not going to tell people, this is not an endorsement. I'm not going to make it tell people how to vote here. Um, I think my, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of what I think and how this is a, a tough thing, but also some changes that I think the legislature needs to get involved with on a lot of these siting and zoning issues. Um, the, the NIMBY stuff is always hard, not in my backyard. It is at the root of a lot of local controversies, whether it's at a city council level or often with county zoning, uh, it becomes a big issue. Um, that's true if it's wind turbines or hog confinements or Walmarts. Uh, the core issue is always that I don't want to live next to that. I rather, rather than whether it should be there or not, uh, that often is the secondary issue. Ultimately, it's about aesthetics. Um, that's what I think this issue is as well, uh, despite the claims of the opponents that they, um, it's scientific, that it's the noise, that it's subsonic sound waves and latent energy in the ground. And uh, I it's not that I don't believe the claims, but I think that if you look into some research on some of those issues, they're often not as solid as one as they would lead you to believe. Um, and so that's what I think the issue is here. It's aesthetics, and I think everybody kind of knows that. Uh, and, you know, maybe aesthetics is a fine way to decide the issue. I'm not saying that's not a, a good argument to have. It, it, should there be wind turbines in Lincoln County at all? Okay, that's fine. Have that discussion. But it's it's because somebody doesn't want it near their house. I am a, a, a proponent of alternative energy. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised by that. And I think, on the whole, most people are. Um, it's it wind, solar, hydro, wave action. I don't care. Use it all. Even some coal. Uh, coal is is not going to go away. We all know that. It's getting more efficient. It's getting cleaner, but it's not. It, it, it's got. To, we still need to reduce our emissions, uh, and in a lot of ways, coal is being undercut and mitigated by natural gas because it's cleaner and cheaper to make electricity. So all these things are changing. We need the big mix. We can't just walk away from it. Winnie Peterson of We Care is the uh, the part of the nonprofit in Lincoln County that supports this greater setbacks, farther distances between turbines and residences. She made the point that conservation of power is an important element in this discussion. When I asked her about what sort of, uh, wh why not have wind uh, and what sort of alternative she wants to see. Um, and I agree on her point about conservation. Conservation is a monumental um, point in our effort to uh, power all the things we need. We are hugely dependent upon electricity. You just, you, you hardly even notice it until it's gone. Uh, I remember a few years ago during the big, one of the big blizzards when we didn't have power, where it was on and off for three days, th then you really realize how vulnerable you are. 
we can't just rely on coal. We know that. And so we're diversifying. So the towers have to go somewhere if you're going to use wind. And this is a windy place. This is one of the advantages we have. That's a little musical interlude for you folks. Um, <laughs> so I'm a proponent of alternative energy. Um, and I, but I think we can all sympathize with Winnie and the opponents uh, that if it was your house, you might feel the same way. But here's the real issue. The state has a problem with this much local control. There need to be statewide standards, not just for wind, but a lot of things. Livestock operations, it's the same problem. I don't want it by me. And it shouldn't be different from county to county. If the minimum for a wind turbine is 1,000 feet in McPherson, it should be 1,000 feet in Lincoln. That's it. And our legislature is always loath to get involved in some of that stuff. But they don't have to make every decision. They just have to set the standards. And the PUC makes recommendations. And the recommendation by the PUC is 1,000 feet. Um, the county commission in Lincoln originally passed 1250 or agreed to 1250 and then passed about 2,500 without getting into too much detail that those different standards, um, basically are on the whims of a couple of local commissioners, even though they're elected. Uh, but that scares off developers. We need those developers and they need us. They need to know what rules they're playing by. And if it's 2,500 feet and that's what we decide it should be, then it should be that way everywhere. The, the legislature needs to get involved. And I know that, that there's going to be a lot of pushback against that um, in that they just don't want to get involved with local decisions. But this is a statewide issue. It's a, it's a development issue for us. It's a tax issue. It's a revenue issue. Um, there's more and more opportunity on the eastern side of the state for wind development. That has to continue because we can supply power to other people. And as the uh, improvements in the whole power grid have gotten better, where we, can, we now can begin to access or sell energy to other places in the world, uh, and without going into it too much, the grid is a strange thing, but just sitting here in Sioux Falls, we didn't have access to sell power back to the grid, even across the border in Minnesota, where you see just miles and miles of wind turbines, both in Minnesota and Iowa. And that's because Minnesota and Iowa both have a statewide mandate for alternative energy. So those utilities have an incentive to do the development. Now, they are benefiting from that. They're creating alternative energy sources and reducing, trying to reduce the dependence on coal. That We have to do that. And I, if you don't believe the science, you don't believe the science, that's fine. Um, but at some point, you're going to have to believe what the scientists are telling you. So reduce coal. And the good thing is that it's not that hard. We actually can do it. Solar, I mean, we've been talking about wind, but solar is such a big potential for us. And you're going to see it more and more. It's becoming more and more affordable. Uh, we don't have net metering in this state, which would allow individual residents to sell back to the utilities, but we need it. I don't really understand the resistance to that either. If I want to have a solar panel on my house and I produce more energy than I need, I should be able to sell that right back to the energy company. But we get resistance on all levels of anything that has kind of that sort of forward looking bent. I don't know why that is. Um, the vote in Lincoln County will, will determine a little bit about where our, our development goes in the future. Uh, again, I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but we need, we need wind power and it's got to go somewhere. We need solar. We need all of it. And that's my PNL statement for the day. If you agree or disagree, you can email me at Patrick at KSO.com. You can follow us on Twitter at P Lally show and let us know what you think there or look us up on Facebook at 1140 KSOO. Uh, we will be right back after the news with Buffalo Maiden during the Why Weird Friends segment. And uh, that's when folks I know call me up and tell me what's going on and make fun of me. Uh, and she'll talk about Mark Zuckerberg. I want to know what's going on. Is he just everywhere out there? What is the deal? And then we'll have Kelsey Passolt from KDLT right after My Weird Friends. This is the Patrick Lally Show on 1140 KSOO.